At every moment, somewhere in the world, the sun is setting. Late in the day when shadows lengthen and the Earth's surface is bathed in the golden light of late afternoon, our world changes and we're exposed to one of the most beautiful scenes in nature. It's a period of dramatic transition. The color of the sun changes from white to yellow to orange. White clouds turn pink and gray. And with the sun's descent below the horizon, objects once distinct become shapes in the dark nightscape. And color disappears. As the English philosopher Francis Bacon once observed, all colors agree in the dark. Color. We all know what it is. Or do we? Why do colors disappear until the following morning? What's happened to the colors? The way we know the world is through our senses. Sight, hearing, touch. Each sense giving us information about our surroundings. Of all our senses, the most important is sight. With it, we're able to perceive size, motion, shape, distance, and color. What makes this possible is light. Light is the stimulus for vision. Without enough light, we can't see color. And we, what do we know? What do we know that prisms make? In the next hour, we'll explore one of the most basic and often misunderstood relationships in the physical world. The connection between light and color. It's an exploration that reveals more than an association based on the laws of physics. It also reveals aspects about our relationship with nature. Because for color to exist, we need more than light. We need us. We use light and color in countless ways. Physicians evaluate patients' health from the color of their skin and eyes. Scientists determine the composition of chemicals or the temperatures of distant stars and their speed by analyzing the colors in the light they emit. Advertisers use color to sway consumers. Listen to it all on Sony tape with full color sound. Designers make statements using colors. And colors are used by all societies as codes and symbols. Of the many lessons we learn as children, our names, the names of simple objects, learning the names of colors and how to use them is an early goal. Much of that learning only touches on the wonderful complexity of light and color. For the thousands of people involved with color, however, the intricacy of the relationship is fascinating and challenging. The effort and expense throughout art and industry to produce and display color is enormous. And as any artist instinctively knows, color is light. The rewards for those most capable of using light and color can be enormous although perhaps not always in their lifetimes. The Van Gogh portrait of Dr. Gachet, showing on my left, for 21. And I have 20 million dollars to start. So 20 million dollars, 20 million dollars, 21 million, 22 million, 22 million dollars, 23 million, 24 million, thank you, 25 million, 26 million, 27 million, 28 million, 29 million, 30 million, 31 million, 32 million, 32 million dollars, hence you here now. Fifty-three million. Sixty-six million. 
$75 million for you, sir. $75 million. Imagine life without color. A world deprived of a crucial and beautiful dimension. Artists seek the sunlight they love because they know there's no substitute for the colors it produces. Van Gogh wrote of the sun's light as he painted in the south of France. Just as others have written of the quality of light in Venice, the American Southwest, or in Tahiti. Of course, not everyone can travel in search of the perfect light, and much of our lives is spent not under the sun, but under artificial illumination. Nevertheless, we use the sun as our main gauge for judging light and color. And the aim of lighting is usually to render colors in a way that we can not only accept, but enjoy. The first attempts to explain light and color scientifically began during the time of Greek civilization, when rational reasoning instead of the supernatural was first used to explain natural phenomena. Dr. Alan Shapiro of the University of Minnesota is a professor of the history of science. Aristotle thought that um, light and color were two different things. Um, light is what makes the world visible um, through the transparent medium, as he called it, which would basically be air or water, but mostly air. And that color is a property of body. Perhaps that is still the most common misconception about color, that it is an inherent, unchanging property of objects. But actually, it depends on three essential factors. The light source, the object, and the observer. In the scientific revolution of the 17th century, philosophical revelations concerning natural phenomena, especially color, transformed our understanding of the universe and separated forever the world we know as people from the world we know as scientists. René Descartes, the philosopher and mathematician, was a vigorous and articulate proponent of the theory that color is only a sensation and that without us, it wouldn't even exist. It was a revolutionary concept. The, the concept, um, particularly through Descartes and what we call the mechanical philosophers at the beginning of the scientific revolution, is the idea that bodies have no qualities. We don't, they're not hot, they're not sweet, they're not red or green. Um, they have certain properties that make us perceive that they're sweet or red or blue. And this is a very sophisticated concept and also one that seems to go against um, our basic intuition. In other words, such qualities are based only on our sensations as human beings and aren't intrinsic to objects. 